these are really unprecedented times. And these unprecedented times give the church unprecedented opportunities to be the church. And while our first instinct may be to be fearful and and hoard toilet paper, let's remember that God is on his throne. And, And because of that, we can be people who live by faith, not fear. And as we walk humbly with our God, we can experience his peace. Isaiah 41.10 says this, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. As we walk humbly with God, we can, we can also know his empowering presence in our lives an empowering presence that will equip us to be the church during these difficult days. Days in which we as Christ followers have a responsibility like any other time in recent history to care for and bless others. Last week we started a short little three-week pre-Easter series called Living in Times of Uncertainty. And Lindsay did a great job, and he, and he shared some very relevant words from the Bible with us. These verses from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 are, are so relevant to the day in which we live. Let, let me read these verses to you again. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Today, I want us to consider how we as Christ followers can practically bless others during these trying times. In the Old Testament, there's a book called the Book of Proverbs. It's, it's really a book of wisdom. And, and Proverbs 11.10 says this, When the righteous prosper, the city rejoices. When the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. Proverbs chapter 11, if you were to read it, you would see that it is a collage of contrasts. The Proverbs in this chapter contrast that which God is approving of, and that which God abhors. Honesty and dishonesty, integrity and slander, humility versus pride. And and then we come to verse 10. You notice the contrast here? Let me read it to you again. When the righteous prosper, the city rejoices. When the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. This verse tells us there is a particular group of people in the city who were prospering, and as they prospered, the city rejoiced. Now, when you think about it, that's strange, given human nature. Usually, when one group of people prosper, other groups respond negatively. But here, there was one group of people who were prospering, and it, and it caused the city to rejoice. Why? It must be because this group was using and sharing what they had for the common good. This group was viewing their prosperity not as a means to self-enrichment, but as a vehicle to bless others. As this group prospered and got more and more money, influence, and power, rather than using it for themselves, they used it to bring about positive transformation in the city. And the city responded by rejoicing. Who were this group? Well, the verse says they were the righteous. Tim Keller was a pastor in New York City, and he says this, The righteous in the book of Proverbs are by definition those who are willing to disadvantage themselves for the community. That definition makes this verse make sense. The righteous were people who were willing to disadvantage themselves for the sake of the city and the people in it. 
people, these people viewed their prosperity as a gift from God, and they used it to bless and care for others. They used their money and their skills and their influence and their relationships and their time, not just for their own good, but also for the common good. Meanwhile, the wicked were those who put their own economic and personal needs ahead of the needs of others. And do you notice? The city shouted for joy when they perished. But when the righteous prospered, the city rejoiced and celebrated. And let me say this this morning. As Christ followers, we are called to be the righteous. We are called to be people who view their prosperity as a gift from God and use it to bless others. We're to be people who are willing to disadvantage themselves for the sake of others and for the good of the city. We are people who should be using what we have for the common good, not just our own good. Historically, a decisive mark of those who follow Jesus is that they care for the poor and the oppressed and the under-resourced and the vulnerable and the sick. One of the distinguishing marks of the early church when it was just formed was its care for others. Acts chapter 2 and verse 44 says this, All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And and then Acts 4, it says this, also about the early church. For there was not a needy person among them. For all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and lay them at the apostles' feet. And they would be distributed to each as any had need. Church historians tell us that Christ followers not only shared with each other, but they also gave generously to those who had need outside the church. The early church was known and respected by even its persecutors for its compassionate acts towards the poor in the needy and the weak in the city. From 251 to 266 AD, a great pandemic struck the Roman Empire to the point when, where 5,000 people a day were dying in Rome itself. The Pope of the time wrote an Easter letter and said in that letter that a substantial number of Christ followers had lost their lives while caring for others. Here is a part of what he said. Most of our brother Christians showed unbounded love and loyalty, never never sparing themselves and thinking only of one another. Heedless of danger, they took charge of the sick, attending to their every need and ministering to them in Christ. And with them, departed this life serenely happy. Many in nursing and curing others transferred their death to themselves and died in their stead. In the 4th century, when a plague hit the city of Caesarea, one of the largest cities in the Roman Empire of that time, people fled the city. And in the midst of people fleeing the city, one group stayed behind, the Christians. And they stayed behind in the city to care for the sick and the dying. Eusebius, who was the bishop of the city and a historian of the early church, wrote that during the plague, all day long, Christians tended to the dying and to their burial, countless numbers with no one to care for them. Eusebius goes on to state that because of the compassion of Christians, the Christians' deeds were on everyone's lips and they glorified the God of the Christians. A few decades later, the Roman Emperor Julian, who was one of the fiercest persecutors of Christians, 
admitted in absolute disgust that he couldn't stop the church from growing no matter how many Christians he killed or he jailed because, and this is what he said, these infernal Galileans, that's the Christians, feed our poor in addition to their own. During the first centuries of the church, it was not Christian worship that attracted people to Jesus. It was how Christians lived that attract people to Jesus. Remember what Bishop Eusebius said? The deeds of Christ followers were on everyone's lips, and they glorified the God of Christians. Wouldn't it be great if at the end of this pandemic that we are in, that all around the world, the deeds of Christ followers were on the lips, were on everyone's lips, and they glorified the God of the Christians. This is an unprecedented time. And these unprecedented times give the church an unprecedented opportunity to care and to bless others. So how can that happen? How can we be a little like the early church? How can we hear the city rejoice? Well, let me go over with you in very practical ways. Sandwich Baptist Church's current, because everything's fluid, our current COVID response and how you can be involved. Here's number one. First of all, as a church, we are listening to Dr. Henry and Dr. Tam, our provincial and federal health officers. And as a church, we are committed to following public health directives that they give us. And I would suggest that all of us following these directives is one way to deeply care for others. Let's each of us do our part to flatten the curve. Secondly, for the month of April at least, and we will evaluate as we go through this month, but for the month of April at least, we will be holding online services only. So for the month of April, online services only 915 here at Saanich. Then, as a church, I want to encourage everyone that is associated with Saanich. I want to encourage actually everyone that is listening online, whether you're part of our community or not. Let's individually reach out and care for those around us. All of us have a realm of influence, people that we influence. It could be in our neighborhood, could be in our workplaces, could be people we associate with school. Let's be people who reach out and care for those in our realm of influence. Even though we're not gathering together in churches and at workplaces and in schools and other places right now, we can still reach out to those people and see how they're doing. Fear is a very real issue right now. And have you ever noticed, fear tends to grow when we are passive. When we are just sitting around and being passive, fear can well up. It can grow within us. But have you also noticed that fear diminishes somewhat when we get active? When we're serving other people, our fear diminishes. Our anxiety lessens. When we go out and we serve others, it resets our focus from ourselves and our own fears to the person we're serving and the God who calls us to serve. So let me suggest some ways that you can individually reach out to your realm of influence and serve them during this time. First thing you can do is adopt your block. Adopt your block. Check on your neighbors, especially the elderly, the vulnerable, the sick. Give them a call. Knock on their door. Practice physical distancing, but knock on their door. Step back and talk to them. See how they're doing. See if there's any needs that you can meet. Maybe get them groceries. Maybe pick up a prescription. Maybe cut their grass. Ask if you can pray for them. If there's something they would like you to pray about. 
How can you bless the anxious neighbor, the elderly widower, the single mom with kids in your neighborhood? And let me say this, if you hear of a need, if you go out into your neighborhood or some other realm of influence and you're seeking to care and you hear of a need that you can't meet, I want to encourage you to contact our church office. Send us an email at office at sandagebaptist.org and we will see how, what we can collectively do as a church to meet that need. We want to be a church that's reaching out and caring for and blessing other people. And so as you go out and you're empowered to meet needs, I want to encourage you to meet those needs. But when you find a need you can't meet, please send an email to our office and we'll see what we can do together. Here, here's the second thing. Be nice. Be nice. There are a lot of massively stressed out people out there right now. I, I was out yesterday picking up some groceries for my parents who are homebound right now because um, they are, would be very susceptible to the COVID um, um, virus. And I was in the grocery store. There are a lot of stressed out people out that are just grumpy. And, and what we need to do is we need to go out and if we got to go to the grocery store or you got to go to the drugstore or somewhere, be nice. Smile. Be nice to that cashier. Be nice to that store clerk. Thank them, encourage them, bless them, because they're out working to serve you. When you see a healthcare worker, thank them. Let's just generally go out and be nice. Here's another one. A third thing you can do as an individual is to help the homeless. The homeless really need our help right now. Maybe you can support a food bank that's open. Maybe you can support our Living Edge Market that Lindsay was talking about earlier that meets Thursday night out at Centennial Park Campus. Maybe you can adopt a homeless camp. My wife and I, uh, this last fall, we adopted a, a homeless camp, and we just go and we bless them and see what their needs are and see how we can meet those needs. Recently, we took them um, some bread from Cobb's Bread, and they were so thankful Maybe there's some way you can bless some homeless people around you. And then last, but certainly and not in any way least, you can pray. This is one of the most powerful things you can do right now. Pray that God will open your eyes to the needs around you and then provide you with the resources to meet those needs. Pray for those who are working. Pray for the church. Pray for those who are fearful and anxious. Pray for those who are struggling financially. Pray for those who have been laid off. Pray for our government leaders. Pray for those who are sick. You get the idea. Just be of much prayer. And we're going to be providing you special specific ways that you can pray, give you some ideas on how to pray and, and what to pray for. And we're going to do that through our prayer newsletter. And if you want to sign up for that prayer newsletter, I think the information is going up on the screen as I speak. And so you can just um, send us a note, and we'd love to sign you up for a prayer newsletter. And that will give you ideas on how to pray and what to pray for. Also, if you have specific prayer requests, that you want the church community praying for you or praying for a neighbor or just if you have specific prayer requests, please send them to office at Saanich Baptist Church and we will get the church praying. Let me also tell you some ways quickly that the church collectively is responding. Some of these have already been mentioned this morning, but Living Edge Market, which I was just talking about, which is, a, which is a market that gives out food to people in need. It's happening Thursdays, every Thursday nights. We're going to keep that going as long as we can, as long as we can get the resources. And thank you, Cisco Foods, for really helping us out, and, and the farmers for helping us out over the last few weeks. And as we continue to get food supply, we will continue to have that market Thursday nights at our Centennial Park campus. Our Cobb's Bread Ministry is continuing, where we get the uh, day-old bread from Cobb's, and we go out and we distribute it to people in need. That is continuing as long as we can. Our Wednesday night 
youth ministry has gone online, and we're getting a great response from that. And if you're a teenager or you know a teenager, go to our website. You'll find out how you can be involved in our Wednesday night youth ministry. Our children's ministry is putting out Sunday resources. They're also putting out other resources for families during this time. And if you go to our live stream page, you will see a resource page there for families. And that will link you to another page where you can see all kinds of resources uh, that our children's ministry people have put together for families during this time as you're all together at your home. Lindsay, our associate pastor, is looking for creative ways to get groups to meet online. And let me also say that we are closely monitoring our financial situation. Like almost every church and almost every nonprofit right now, we are struggling financially, you can imagine. And so if you can help us out, if you can give us a gift uh, that would help us during this time financially, that would be so appreciated. Again, you can do that online. Also, if you want to help people in need, and you want to just donate to our benevolent fund, which helps people in need. You want to give over and above and help us respond to people's needs financially and other ways. You can also give to our benevolent fund. Let me also stay, say this. Let's stay connected together, church community. We're, we're apart, but let's stay connected together. Maybe one of the challenges I could give the people that are part of Sandwich Baptist is Call some people in the church you know and see how they're doing. I got a call this week from someone in our church, and, and it was a great blessing. It was just a full, short phone call for them to check in on us, and it was a blessing that somebody was thinking of us. Maybe there's some people in our church you can call and check up and see how they're doing. I want you to know this. Uh, in that regard, starting this week, the staff are starting to call um, SBC seniors uh, single parents, and those that we know that are struggling with health issues, the sick. And we're calling to see how they're doing and see if there's any needs that we can meet. And if you're in one of those groups and you don't get a call, it's not because we don't like you. It's because we don't have your information. And we'd love to give you a weekly call. And so if you don't get a call this next week, can you please send us uh, an email at office at sandwichbaptist.org or call the church and office, and we will make sure we get you on our list because we want to make sure that everyone is cared for the best we can during these days, especially our seniors and the sick and the single parents and others who are, who are, who are struggling in our midst. Rick Boomer is starting to spearhead a new initiative of working with some medical personnel to help seniors in our community, those beyond our church community who need help. And he needs some help doing this. If you're willing to go get groceries for some seniors in our community, or if you're willing to help some seniors in our community in practical ways, again, if you can send a note to office at sandwichbaptist.org, we will forward that to Rick. And Rick is spearheading this and seeing how we can bless seniors in our community that need help right now, might not have the help of families, and, and he needs help doing this. So if you're willing to do that, office at sandwichbaptist.org. As we move through this crisis, I'm sure there's going to be all kinds of other ways that we can respond. And we're going to move together. We're going to get through this together. And I want to leave you with a couple of verses. Isaiah 58.10 says this, Feed the hungry, help those in trouble, then your light will shine out from the darkness, and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. Matthew 5.14 and 16, Jesus told his disciples, You are the light of the world. You let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Church, this is our time to shine brightly. This is our time to work together for the common good. This is our time to rise up and live 6-8 like never before. This is our time to rise up and walk humbly and love mercy and act justly like never before. This is our time to reach out and care for those around us with the love of Jesus. And as we do those things, 
if we listen closely, we will hear the city rejoicing. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for just this time we can have together where we can come together to worship you and, and sing, where we can come together and celebrate as a church community even though we're not together, things like a wedding, a marriage. And we can come together and, and learn together about the early church and, and how they met needs and the challenge that we would step up like they did. And that we would go out and sacrificially care for the people in this city. God, I pray as a church collectively that we would be willing in these days just to, just to rise up and care and bless people however we can. I pray for individuals because the, the, the church is people. And as, as we as a church are di dispersed all over greater Victoria and people are listening online that are well beyond the reach of just greater Victoria. As Christ followers go out into their individual realms of influence, into their neighborhoods, into the other areas where they're involved and care for those people, God, I pray you would open our eyes to the needs around us and then empower us and resource us to meet those needs. And at the end of it all, may the city rejoice and may we rejoice in the God of the Christians. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we close out this morning, we have a, a video we want to share with you, and then Lindsay's going to come up, and he is going to uh, close the service. Um, we've been challenging our church for some time. Actually, it started last September. We've been challenging our church to 555, five, five. pray for five people, five minutes a day, five days a week. And here is a video that will remind you to do that. We've been praying for five people who don't know Jesus five minutes a day, five days a week. During this time when many are struggling, there may be further ways to help. Offer to pick up groceries or medications. Be in touch with someone who can't leave home. Buy gift cards for groceries or takeout. Think of ways to support struggling businesses. If you're quarantined, use the extra time to pray. Keep your eyes open, be creative. Everyone will have different needs. Don't give in to fear. We serve a loving, powerful God who has promised to be our refuge. Let's turn to him as we continue to pray over this situation and our five people. Well, this has been a, a great time together. I hope you've been encouraged. hope you've seen the opportunity that, that we have in, in times that maybe are a little dark it's been great to have Steve back with us this morning to be a part of our, our church family. Just as I dismiss you this morning, I want to read to you um, a benediction. These are words from uh, Jude, verse 24 and 25. It says, To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen. Well, let's go from here. Let's live 6-8. Let's bless those in our realms of influence. Our neighbors, our families, our friends, our co-workers. God bless. Have a great weekend.